Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. How you doing, brothers on the bike? My man, check this out real quick. I see y'all across the street listening earlier. Y'all have any questions which y'all heard? Any questions? I, I see y'all already getting in. Y'all was listening. You know how great you are? Did you get a flyer? Okay, hey, make sure y'all will, will read the flyer. It's a number on the back. Make sure y'all give us a call. Because we out here let y'all know how precious y'all brothers is. Y'all young princes becoming kings one day. But guess what? If you don't know where you came from or where you're going, how could you move accordingly? So y'all can just ride away, but check it out. This information we're giving, you can't pay for it nowhere. Pastor ain't gonna give it to you, nor your teachers. Why? Because most of them don't know, and the other ones don't care about you. But that's why we out here, brother. So if y'all got time, listen up. Watch this. The time is at hand, so that's what we're talking about now. God has given our people a time to hear them, instead of just keep going like, like y'all don't see us out here. We got purple on so you can notice we out here, that the word of God is coming to you. Watch this. Second Peter, chapter 3 and verse 9. Go to 10. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Y'all hear that? You hear that? It said the day of the Lord will come like a thief as a, in the night. Let me ask y'all a question. When does a thief usually rob somebody? Nighttime. Nighttime. When they sleep or when they're on vacation with their mind somewhere else, right? It's when a thief will rob you. So what it means is, do you know what time a thief coming over? Do you know when a thief will come rob you? You don't know. That's how crisis going to come. So while we just live in life day to day, acting like we don't have the time clock that's ticking, he said, I'm going to come when you least expect it. The day he come, y'all going to remember the men y'all standing in front of. Y'all remember y'all had an opportunity to hear the word of God. You know what I'm saying? So while you got it, what better thing do you have to do on the Lord's Sabbath day? Because y'all probably don't even know it's the Sabbath, right? You don't even know that. Our people in custom, we always chilled on this day. We always got together on this day. But nobody never told you that. Imagine having a family cookout. Every, every, well not a cookout, well after the sun go down. Imagine getting with your family every Saturday. Every Saturday family get together. A family reunion every Saturday. How precious and beautiful is that, bro? This is how God always had our people. You feel me? This is how we supposed to be, but if y'all never learned that, how would you be able to get this? What y'all got to do? So important right now. Nothing, right? So you'd rather go home and do nothing than to learn who you actually are? You see you see what I'm saying? Hey, stick around. Right now, we, we're going over something heavy because I want them to understand the need and the want that they have to come congregate as soon as possible. Let y'all know how important it is to gather around like-minded people because we can't do this by ourselves. Believe it or not, a lot of our brothers and sisters think I could be at home, I could celebrate the Sabbath. I could learn by myself. No, we need each other. That's scriptural. Watch this. This is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the, hev the, he the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. What was we talking about earlier on the news? The nuclear missiles. He just said Christ will come like a thief in the night when the day the heavens is going to go, is going to do what? Read that again. Shall pass away with a great noise. A great noise. What makes a great noise to make the heavens pass away? An explosion, a nuclear bomb. He's telling us years, hundreds of years ago, brothers, we reading about nuclear missiles in the Bible. And if y'all watch the news, if y'all do anything, on the news, you'll see it's about to be a war. It's called World War Three. They prepare for that. So while we just running, thinking about TikTok, we thinking about PlayStation, bro, the world is lining up to send the stage for the Third World War. All countries is all involved. All countries got nuclear missiles on deck. They all ready to press the button. 
So while you least expect it, while you play PlayStation, you'll hear a great boom, and your house will start shaking. What happens after a nuclear missile hit? Everything around it disintegrates. And that's what we read them. Read that part again. And the, uh, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, uh -huh. in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, uh -huh. and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So first you hear a boom. Then it said the elements go melt with fervent heat. This is nuclear fire right in the Bible. Warning y'all, it's not time to play. You don't gotta go right away and do nothing when God is telling you, you can say, you know what? How do I make sure I get to heaven? The are the questions we want out here. How do I repent? How do I get saved? Hey, how do I tell my mom and my uncles and my, 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 my brothers to repent before Christ returns? I don't wanna see them get burnt up. These are the questions y'all should be asking yourself. Because when you turn on the news, this is what's going down right now. This is what they're planning right now. All countries are on hand with it. Am I right, bro? This is what's happening. So I, I, would, I would tell y'all, hey, when you get home, turn on the news. Nuclear missiles, we don't know when it's going to happen. It was already written. So keep reading. Watch this. This is why I asked you the question. And the elements shall melt with vibrant heat. Young brother, you know what an element is? What is the element? What do elements make? Water, fire, stuff like that. You ever heard of table of contents? Table of elements? Everything that you see is made by certain elements. It's letting you know everything is going to burn. The streets, the trees, everything you see is going to be in fervent heat. August 9th, 1945. The Nagasaki nuclear explosion. August 6th, 1945 the Hiroshima nuclear explosion. Since these World War II attacks, nuclear weapons have become even more powerful. The Hiroshima bomb produced an explosion of 15 kilotons. One kiloton equals the explosive power of a thousand tons of TNT. If it was detonated in New York City's Times Square, this is what it would look like. The radius of the affected area would be almost a mile long. This yellow circle indicates the radius of the explosion's fireball. Within the red circle, fatalities are near 100%, and all concrete structures are damaged or demolished. Within the gray circle, most residential structures are destroyed, and there are massive injuries and fatalities. The orange circle indicates the area in which third-degree radiation burns occur. But the sheer destructive power of that explosion pales in comparison to the largest thermonuclear weapon currently in the United States arsenal, the B-83. Created in the late 1970s, the B-83 can produce an explosion of up to 1,200 kilotons, which is 80 times the Hiroshima explosion. That's the explosive power of 1.2 million tons of TNT. If dropped on New York City, the radius of the affected area would be over seven miles. Then, there's the 1954 Operation Castle Bravo, the largest nuclear bomb ever tested by the United States. It produced a 15,000 kiloton explosion, which is over 1,000 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. If detonated in New York City, the radius of the affected area would be over 21 miles. But there's even one more powerful than that. On October 30th, 1961, the Soviet Union tested the Tsar Bomba. It is the most powerful weapon ever detonated. It produced a 50,000 kiloton explosion. That's 3,300 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. The mushroom cloud was so tall that it dwarfed anything on Earth. If dropped on New York City, the radius of the affected area would be over 31 miles. The Tsar Bomba was created over five decades ago. Today, there are an estimated 14,900 nuclear weapons in the world. If not for the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty of 1963, we might have even more powerful bombs today. It's not just 
just a regular fire that you cook a burger with. This is extra heat. Everything is going to be burnt. This is the Bible talk. During that time, they didn't have nothing that could do that. But Peter seen it, so he had to write it down for us to understand. Keep reading. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. It said the works also. So you will still have people building buildings. You have still people, kids will be playing in the park. You have kids riding down the street. He said everything is going to be burnt up while people are the least expect it. It could be right now. It could be tomorrow. We don't know. But this is why we out here to get our people to prepare. Remember, hey, bro, real quick, sister. Y'all remember that man repented when Christ was on the cross? Yeah. Meaning right now he believed that Christ was the Savior, right? And before he died, Christ said, you're going to sit on my right hand, right? Meaning we have a chance to repent because we don't know tomorrow could be our day. So right now is the time. Keep reading that. Verse, verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of the persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation? So it said, brothers, listen up. It said, how y'all doing, young boys? So what we're doing is telling our people to get ready because we don't know when the last day will be. I was just letting them know nuclear fire is on the news right now. It's about to be a war. Y'all know that? So America about to be at war with Russia, right? America and Russia has the most nuclear missiles in the world. They have different places where they got nuclear missiles planted at. So we just read out the Bible. Y'all agree? Y'all just y'all heard me, right? We read out the Bible that nuclear fire is going to hit. <coughs> it said everything will be burned with fervent heat. It said, what manner of people should we be knowing all this is about to happen? What type of person should you be knowing that nuclear fire about to come? This is why I say it's so important. We don't take these little pieces of paper lightly. Don't just throw it in the back seat. Don't throw it in the garbage. This stuff, y'all parents got to know. If you want to save your family life, give them that paper. Because he's already telling you that nuclear fire is going to happen. So he said, is my people going to change or not? You think our people will change after they hear the word of God? You think, you hearing this today, me proving to you that Christ is black, do you think that you'll be willing to change? Give me some rock five and four. Five and four, and then we'll close. So rock five and four. We can't take this thing lightly, brothers. So right now, God has chosen all y'all, because guess what? It's young boys in our school that's y'all age. It's boys in y'all in, in age that's doing big works. You know what I'm saying? Don't think because of your age, you can't change people's lives. Trust me, you, you hear that? You can watch online, you can bring your parents, you saving lives at your age. Watch this. So Rock, chapter 5 and verse 4. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath, come, hath happened unto me? So some people say, hey, I didn't sin my whole life. Y'all with me? People like, say not, I have sinned, and what harm has came to me? Like the brother over there, y'all just seen what happened. I got a bald head, I'm eating a miss of sin. What happened to me? I'm still out here. You can say the Bible mean anything you want to you. But brothers don't want to learn. Keep reading. For the Lord is long-suffering. Because that's people's excuse. As the Lord said in 1st, 2nd Peter 3, he's long-suffering. So the fact that none of y'all got killed yet, none of y'all got shot yet, you know people y'all age coming up missing every day. Y'all know that, right? Y'all just disappearing. You riding your bike home, a, a van pull up next to you, and guess what? They sell you to organ trafficking. They take your body, cut it apart, and they sell your heart to a person, your liver to another person, or they put you in the house and they beat you and rape you. That's what's going on with your brothers in the street right now. So while y'all thinking life is la la and y'all got your whole life to get it together, bro, things is happening right now. Watch this. He will in no wise let thee go. He said he will in no wise let a brother go who think the Lord is long suffering and you got to you a, a grown man to repent. No, you can, got to repent now, brothers. You hear the word of God? You see your brothers with you? Take a look at it. Let me read this, this pamphlet. Let me see what they're talking about. Let me get this to my parents. Don't think you got your whole life to get it together because you could get hit tomorrow by a car. Nobody knows their day. Nobody knows their day. Read. Concerning propitiation, uh -huh. be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Propitiation, you know what that means, OG? Propitiation, you know what that means? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, no, no, no. It's basically how can how could you pay God back and then try to say you don't put sin upon sin and think that you could pay God back for what you did. There's no excuse. When your day come, you can't ever say I didn't see the prophets or I didn't have opportunity to hear the word of God. Nobody has that excuse no more. Your brother just had a, he had a chance. He didn't want to hear it. So when his day come, he has no excuses unless he repent another day. Today might not be his day. It might be next year. 
Might be tomorrow. Who knows? That's of him and the Lord. Keep reading. Verse 7. Verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. It said make no tarrying to, to come to the Lord. You know what tarrying mean? Be, be slothful. Be procrastinate. Meaning, hey, I'm cool. I'm just a kid. I, I get myself together when I become a grown-up. It said don't make no tearing day to day off to the Lord. Why? Why did he say that? For And put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. Because suddenly of the wrath of the Lord could come forth. Suddenly one of y'all gets shot just chilling on the block. And you ain't got nothing to do with it. Suddenly no, nobody knows the day of the Lord. Nobody knows the day the Lord will call us home. So it said don't put off day to day because destruction could come. When the most High see fit, to put put the, put it into you, he want to call you home, and then the first thing you'll see, you will run into Christ, right. and he gonna say, "Hey, what have you done? What have you done? Our people got to wake up. It is time to repent, brothers." What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models.